Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, March 13, 2022. I am Reverend Mary Tillman, Associate Minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. Our spring quarter study is God Frees and Redeems. We're in Unit 1, and the theme is Liberating Passover. This is lesson number two in Unit number one. And our lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is Freedom to Worship. The title in the Faithway Bible Studies for Adults is Support for Needed Projects. Our devotional reading, Ezra chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. Our background scripture, Ezra 5 chapter 6 verses 1 through 12, chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. And our print passage is Ezra, chapter 6, verses 1 through 12. The key verse is 12a from chapter 6, and it reads from the NIV Bible, May God, who has caused his name to dwell there, overthrow any king or people who lifts a hand to change this decree or to destroy this temple in Jerusalem. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our understanding so that we may learn how to live an obedient life that is pleasing to you. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Our lesson introduction. This quarter study uses the lens of liberation and Christian freedom to examine and experience the nature of God who acts to deliver and free people in different situations. This is our second lesson in Unit 1 entitled Liberating Passover. This unit consists of four lessons that explore the liberating events of the Exodus. Have you ever been discouraged or just wanted to give up? or just stop doing something and walk away? Have you ever started working on a project to be met by a lot of opposition, discouragement, and intimidation? Well, in this week's lesson, we'll see how the enemy of God tried to hinder, discourage, and stop the rebuilding of the temple. But with encouragement and the hand of God working, the people continued and completed their project the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. So, get your Sunday school book, your Bible, pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this wonderful lesson. Let's get started. There are three questions for you to consider. Question number one, what did King Darius add to King Cyrus's decree? Question number two, what important role did King Darius play in the completion of the temple in Jerusalem? And question number three, what message did King Darius send to the governor and the other officials about completing the work of the temple? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. The book of Ezra deals with the rebuilding of the temple and the reviving of the people after they had returned to Jerusalem. The first six chapters of Ezra record how the Lord set the stage for the rebuilding of the Jerusalem temple. It begins with a royal decree from King Cyrus of Persia inviting exiles to return to Jerusalem after 70 years of captivity in Babylon to rebuild their temple as we studied in last week's lesson. The king's decree generated a response from many Jews to return to Jerusalem. A remnant of the Jews returned to Jerusalem, the promised land, the land that God had promised them. Upon their return, they began rebuilding the temple. The reconstruction of the temple had begun, the work is progressing, and the people were met with much opposition. The first effort to rebuild the temple was interrupted, and we see this in Ezra chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. However, 
As strong opposition to the project arose, there was a decree for them to stop building. And we see that in chapter 4, from verses, chapter 4, verses 1 through chapter 5, verse 17. Ezra chapter 4 verse 24 reads, Thus the work on the house of God in Jerusalem came to a standstill until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. King Darius was the third king of the Persian Empire and the successor to King Cyrus. Due to discouragement, harassment, intimidation, and Satan's interference, the rebuilding of the temple was stopped. The people stopped working for God approximately 16 years. In chapter 5, God raised up two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah. They were called by God to encourage the people to continue the work of rebuilding the temple. After some time, during the reign of King Darius, Haggai and Zechariah preached messages that stirred and convicted the people to resume and complete the building project. And we see that in Ezra chapter 6, verses 1 through 22. The enemies were upset, but the people continued to work, and the prophets continued to encourage them. That's Ezra chapter 5. Let's dive into the lesson. This week's lesson's aims are, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. 1. Review the pivotal role of Darius in getting the new temple built in Jerusalem. Number 2. Ponder excuses we offer for failing to act in accord with God's will. And 3. Confess your failings before God, receive the joy of forgiveness, and get on with the task at hand. There are two lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is a restoring decree, and we find that in Ezra chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. The second outline, a resounding decree, and that's Ezra chapter 6, verses 8 through 12. Outline number one. A Restoring Decree, Ezra chapter 6 verses 1 through 7, and it reads, King Darius then issued an order, and they searched in the archives stored in the treasury at Babylon. A scroll was found in the citadel of Agbatana in the province of Media, and this was written on it. Memorandum. In the first year of King Cyrus, the king issued a decree concerning the temple of God in Jerusalem. Let the temple be rebuilt as a place to present sacrifices and let its foundations be laid. It is to be 60 cubits high and 60 cubits wide with three courses of large stones and one of timbers. The costs are to be paid by the royal treasury. Also, the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, are to be returned to their places in the temple in Jerusalem. They are to be deposited in the house of God. Verse 6. Now then, Tadani, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Shetha Bosnia, and you other officials of that province, stay away from there. Do not interfere with the work of this temple of God. Let the governor and the Jews and the Jew, let the governor of the Jews and the Jewish leaders rebuild this house of God on its site. Let me say this that again. Let the governor of the Jews and the Jewish elders rebuild this house of God on its site. Key point number one, the importance of the rediscovered decree of King Cyrus is that it called for royal support for the rebuilding of the house of God when the Jews returned to their homeland. The text emphasizes the absolute sovereignty of God even in a world controlled by foreign powers, one of the book's major theological themes. 
Key point number two. The king's attention to the details of the building reinforces the promises God made to his people at the time of the destruction of their land. He promised that he would return them to their land. Because of such a long time waiting, many lost motivation and hope in the prospect of seeing the restoration of the temple and their beloved homeland, Jerusalem. However, we know God is faithful to every promise, and when the time came, he spared no detail in describing how the promise would be carried out in the restoration work of the temple. We must keep in mind that God is a God of order. His plans are not our plans. His divine order is foolproof, and it is working for our good. In verses 6 and 7, we read where the governor and the officials of Trans-Euphrates were to stay away and not interfere with this project. This mission was to be governed by the Jews and the Jewish elders. Outline number two, a resounding decree. And we find this in Ezra chapter 6, verses 8 through 12. Moreover, I hereby decree what you are to do for these elders of the Jews and the construction of this house of God. Their expenses are to be fully paid out of the royal treasury from the revenues of Trans-Euphrates so that the work will not stop. Whatever is needed, young bulls, rams, male lambs for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, and wheat, salt, wine and olive oil as requested by the priests in Jerusalem must be given them daily without fail so that they may offer sacrifices pleasing to the God of heaven and pray for the well-being of the king and his sons. Verse 11. Furthermore, I decree that if anyone defies this edict, a beam is to be pulled from their house and they are to be impaled on it. And for this crime, their house is to be made a pile of rubble. May God, who has caused his name to dwell there, overthrow any king or people who lifts a hand to change this decree or to destroy this temple in Jerusalem. My, my, my. Key point number one. In addition to being forbidden to interfere with or even go near the site, King Darius demanded by decree that the expenses for the completion of the work were to be paid in full from the governor's treasurer. Also, whatever was needed for their sacrificial offerings, the young bulls, etc., as stated in verse number 9. Tatanai's scheme to keep the people from worshiping in the rebuilt temple backfired and worked instead for their benefit. Instead of stopping the Jews from completing their rebuilding project and returning to the worship of their God, his scheme effectively shortened the time before they would gain again worship for their God in the temple. God used King Darius to wholeheartedly support the rebuilding of the temple and comply with the decree of his predecessor, King Cyrus. God was working on behalf of his people. Question. Can you recall a time when God caused your enemies or your naysayers, those people that said you couldn't do it or you wouldn't be able to succeed, to come to your aid? The people who you thought were against you? Think about your but God situation. I have quite a few but God situations. Things that happen, I know that if it were not for God, they would not have happened. So we all have these experiences. But remember, God is faithful and his precious promises are true. Key point number two. A warning and a curse concluded the decree by King Darius. He threatened anyone who would defy the decree with public disgrace and possibly death. And we see that in verse number 11. As if that was not enough, Darius called on God Almighty to overthrow any king or people who would lift a hand to change the decree or to destroy the temple in Jerusalem. And that's in verse 12. 
King Darius concluded his statement in the manner of Persian kings, declaring that his was the only authorization needed for obedience to the edict in verse 12b. His decree was to be carried with diligence. In summary, the rediscovered decree of King Cyrus set the stage for all that follows in the book of Ezra. The decree established that the Lord had summoned his people to renewal and often works in unexpected ways to accomplish his purpose. Throughout biblical history, and even today, the Lord continually invites his people to begin again. We know that life contains many difficulties and detours that require a new start. The people of Judah spent decades in exile, the place of failure where they justly deserved for their sins. Yet when the season of their captivity was complete, the Lord called his people to go up and rebuild the temple and restore their land. Israel's opportunity for renewal came about in unexpected ways. As God stirred the hearts of kings, he used Cyrus and Darius to affect his will and his purpose. My brothers and sisters, just as God prevailed through unexpected people with resources for Israel, he will do and has done the same for us. In spite of our shortcomings and disobedience, God often gives us opportunity to repent and start again. Remember, time is filled with swift transition. Naught of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. That second stanza of that hymn says, Trust in him who will not leave you whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling and just hold on to God's unchanging hand. When it seems all hope is gone, and no one cares, remember that God is standing by and whatever you need, whatever I need to complete the projects that God has assigned to us, he has already provided. We just walk in faith and walk in expectation, knowing the Lord will make a way somehow and the Lord will provide. I know he will provide whatever we need to do his will, provision has already been made. I hope you got a thought out of the lesson. Don't give up. Don't give in. God has a plan and you will succeed. Let us pray. Eternal God, you keep every promise. Thank you for the ways in which you renew and restore us. We praise you for your faithfulness and your steadfast love. Keep us close is our prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.